I have a weak word for every day and up till today, Romans 8. So we're going to speak from Romans 8. If you please can write down in your Bible or on a piece of paper or on a tablet or on a phone, somewhere. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's such a richness in Romans 8. My brother and my sister, we can carry on for a whole term or a year just from Romans 8. There's an intense, intense depth out of Romans 8 that you can take. And I, I challenge you to come to Rome, to, to know Romans 8 even from your heart. Go and study this chapter and see that what God would want to, what we want to say to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, first of all, we're going to write down a few points about the Holy Spirit and that what He wants to do in our lives. We can carry point number one. Where is the Holy Spirit working in my life? Okay, that's not number one. That's the heading. You can write that down. Just take it back for the guys just to... To write that, thank you. Where is the Holy Spirit working in my life? Can you say, can you see where the Holy Spirit is working in your life today? Because He wants to work in you. He's excited. He has an agenda with you and He wants to work with you today. So if we can allow Him. First point then. Romans 8 verse 16. Romans 8 verse 16. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That we are God's children. He confirms the fact that we belong to God. And my brother and my sister, that is not just the day when you gave your life to Christ that you start to know that I am a child of God. But even today, the Holy Spirit wants to remind you that you're a child of God. That's part of the work of the Holy Spirit. And that means that when you go through things, the Holy Spirit wants to remind you that, remember, your Father is in heaven. Remember that He treats you and He respects you as His child. Remember that as His child, this is one the, what He wants to do in your life. Remember as His child how he loves you. Remember as his child how he will protect you. Remember as his child he has the best for you in the future. He always wants to remember, remind you who you are with God. That you're a child of God. And with that and because child therefore heir and co-heir and etc etc and let's add another thousand things. But it all starts if you will always just first of all remember I'm a child of God. And then you read this book, and the rest of your life on earth is because you are a child of God. But let that not be a cheap revelation to you, because it cost Jesus everything for you and me to become children of God. But not just children to be in heaven with Him, but for a specific calling, specific life here on earth. That's why every day, more and more and more, He wants to establish your identity as a child of God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And that when He says, the Spirit Himself testifies with my spirit that I'm a child of God. Because my spirit, when I gave my life to Christ, my spirit was reborn. 2 Corinthians 5 Everything became new. Where in my spirit? My spirit is perfect. My soul can have a lot of issues. And a lot of things that need to change still in my soul. With emotions and intellect and opinions and mindsets. Hello? But in my spirit, the fullness of God dwells. And that's why 2 Corinthians 5. See, everything became new. Everything. Everything. Everybody say everything. everything. And that is in my spirit. Everything became new. And that's why from this place of perfection, from this place where God deposited the gold from heaven in your spirit, the testimony in your spirit, Holy Spirit come alongside and say, I want to testify with what the Father has placed in your spirit. 
I want to testify with that what the Father has placed in your spirit. So Holy Spirit is opening up that what is in your spirit already. You with me? Let's allow him. Let's allow him. Point number two. He calls us into a relationship. He calls us into a relationship. 8 verse 15. The spirit you received does not make you slaves. Does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba. That means Papa. That means Father. That means Daddy. What are we talking about? The spirit you received. The spirit from God that is in you. Does not want you to be a slave to religion. Doesn't want to enslave you where you have nothing to say. But he wants you to understand that he wants your heart and God's heart to connect. He wants you to realize, call out to him. Papa, no angel, no perfect, amazing creature in heaven can call him Abba, except you and me. Only us as human beings can call him Father. And that is the, the, the awesome relationship that he expects of you what he draws you into the holy spirit holy spirit giving you that word so everything holy spirit is going to speak to you as a sum total of everything it would be so that you will cry out to god as father god as father and the holy spirit will help you how to live such a lifestyle and when you surrender to god say god help me in this what Holy Spirit will do, he wants to help you in that, but in the process of what you're going through, he wants you to bring to the, you to the point of saying, Abba, my Father. And that put to position yourself as a child of the Father. For that, Jesus gave everything. Jesus gave everything. Spirit of God, not to make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Because fear will be only driven out by 1 John 4, 18. Driven out by perfect love. Perfect love will drive out all fear. Don't deal with your fear. Just allow God's love to come in and the love will deal with the fear. God's love will deal with the fear. Battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to God's love to deal with the fear in you. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him you cry, Abba, Father. Point number three, live with agenda. Holy Spirit is living in you with an agenda. He's not just there to be there. He's not just there to be there. You can sit here, my brother, my sister, and you can have a major attitude. You won't believe how when people talk about the word, some demons manifest in people. And then suddenly they have this thing coming. Or they get this face. Or they cannot look you in the eye. Or they cannot this. Or they cannot that. Shoo. It's because God wants to set them free. Amen. So that was with me. That was with different people. That we experience it from ourselves and towards ourselves. Hello. But allow Holy Spirit to do a work. What are we talking about? Once again. Can you read with me? Verse 11. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. Why? And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. He lives with an agenda in you. Holy Spirit lives with an agenda in you. And that's one of the few places, only a few places in the Bible where we see a verse or chapter about the Trinity, about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
One is in the beginning, hey? When God said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit said to one another, let us make man. And then in Isaiah, who will go for us? For us. Who's us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Who will go for us? Then in the baptism of Jesus, this is my beloved Son. And the Holy Spirit came on the Son. Hello? An amazing. Our Father's home. One, blah, blah, blah. John 14, 23. If somebody love me, you'll obey me. And we, we, who will come? We will come and make our home with him. Who's we? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Who wants to live in us and among us. Amen. And here's also another one. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus. Just bear with me here. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus. If the Spirit as a promise from the Father. Though the Spirit that came from the Father. Because the Father raised the Son. Amen. If the Spirit from the Father who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, what will He do? He will quicken your mortal bodies. He will bring life to your mortal bodies. He comes there with an agenda. Thank you. He comes there with an agenda. Are you with me? Let's say the Spirit in me has an agenda. But you won't believe it, my brother, my sister, if it's a spirit of religion, if it's a spirit of performance, if it's a spirit of issues, you will know, you will find somebody, he always have issues with someone. He always have issues with some people or issues with himself. There's always issues. Because he started to have this relationship with issues. And at the end of the day, he draws some demons to him. And they, those demons are now living with him. But every spirit has an agenda. Those demons has an agenda to destroy your life. So you will always have some petty issue with someone. And unfortunately, so many times it comes from a family background because that's the first place where we get hurt. Why? Because mom and dad, they were not God. They were imperfect human beings that made sometimes a hell of a lot of mistakes. But I can still reach my destiny. If I honor them, then I'm protected against their mistakes. Because I can only honor them when I come with humility. And not say, I will never make that mistakes. You know, that's judgment. You will be ten times worse. But when you can honor in spite of the mistakes. Then you have awesome destiny in front of you. Let it be so in Jesus' name. But my brother, my sister, we must know. Every spirit is there with an agenda. Every demon of negativity or depression or criticism or racism or, or superiority or pride or whatever or inferiority or bitterness or judgment or unforgiveness. Or, but you will find it that your heart always has some other issue. That even when the word is spoken, you are busy reasoning in your mind. Then you may just ask, is this devil's reasoning with a word? Why this reasoning? Or why suddenly when the word is there, you feel depressed, or you feel frustrated, or you feel irritated? That's demonic. And either go for deliverance, or, or just tell that thing that's coming close to you, hey, wrong address, sorry. <laughs> this house belongs to the Lord. This house is the temple of the Holy Spirit. There's only one allowed in this place, and that's the Holy Spirit. So, and so that more and more, when your heart and your mind becomes awake when you hear the word of God, you know there's only one spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. But when you hear the word of God, and you become sometimes miserable, or, or issues, or now you're sleepy, now you're this, now you're that, it doesn't happen when it's the uh, football, or the rugby, or the this. Some of us are not at all into that. Uh, other stuff. And then we are awake. No, 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 no. Just when that thing comes close to you. doesn't mean you are full of demons. That's not what I'm saying. But when that other thing comes close to you, you just tell him, you go, you go. The Bible says, I will not have fellowship with demons. 
So you will have now fellowship with the Word and the Holy Spirit, or you will have fellowship with other things. But the things that you have fellowship with now will manifest. When God is coming on the scene through His Word to have fellowship with you, that is the moment where the other stuffies that we have fellowship with will manifest. You'll find that in your time with God. You'll find it when you just with the Word. And, and suddenly all these other stuff. Bring the Word into you. Let the Word come into you. And it will drive out with the rest. The Word will work. It will not return void to God. The Word will accomplish what it was sent for. It was sent into your life. To bring an awesome, awesome harvest. For the Lord. Amen. Yes. Holy Spirit is in you with an agenda. No devil with an agenda can come close to you. In Jesus' name. We pro proclaim that. Number four. So number four will be. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I think it's because of the load shedding. Naughty load shedding. Okay. Number four. The Holy Spirit will bring life. We said that basically already in Romans 8 verse 11. He will, he's in you with an agenda. And secondly, from verse 11, because the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, he will also, Christ from the dead, he will also give life to your mortal bodies. So life is, there's life in you. You can feel emotionally drained. But life, the life of Christ is in you. It's in you. Fullness of life is there. John 10.10. 10, the enemy comes to kill, steal, destroy. But I have come so that you can have life and life in abundance. But the life will be staying locked up. That excellent, excellent, excellent life that you can have. It will be locked up till you die. Unless through the Holy Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit... To open it up for you so that it will overflow in your soul, through your life, in your relationships. Amen. And it will happen. Okay, there we go. Number five is there to, to kill, is there to destroy. The Holy Spirit is in you to destroy. That sounds excellent, eh? Now verse 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body. You put to death. Let's say, Holy Spirit, put to death that what is not from you in me. That is the Holy Spirit as a fire. That is the Holy Spirit as a fire. You asking Holy Spirit to come and Come and burn away everything that is not from God. Because God is a consuming fire. There's no cheap relationship with God. There's no cheap coming before his throne. Yes, there's coming before the cross of Christ. But to enter the throne of grace, there's only through the blood. Only through the blood. Amen. Are you with me? So Holy Spirit wants to bring death to certain rubbish in my life. Because those rabbis are going to destroy me. Those fires are destructive fires. There's destructive fires of lust and pornography and issues and bitterness and whatever. And fears and anxiety and things that can work in you. And that fires will stay there and it will destroy you. You will go to heaven as through fire. But life on earth will be a fight against destruction. Against the fires the whole time that you must put out that's burning in your life. Unless you allow the Holy Spirit to deal. Fight fire with fire. Yes. Fight fire with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hello. Once again, the battle belongs to the Lord. Okay. Let the fire of God deal with that. What is burning in you that can destroy your life. Because it says... When you are in the flesh, it leads to death. Death of the life that God has for you tomorrow. Not eternal death that you're going to burn in hell. You're a child of God. But for what God has for you here on earth. Tomorrow it can be death. 
Don't destroy the opportunities that God has for you tomorrow. He's waiting for you in tomorrow. He's excited. He's passionate about this week with you. God is passionate about this month with you. God is passionate about the rest of the year with you, of what is laying ahead with you. But you have the choice through the Holy Spirit. But if it's, it can only happen if you walk and, and work through the Holy Spirit. That's why in this whole chapter, from the beginning, it will start with, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who does not work walk after the flesh but after the spirit so if you do it with the spirit of god you will not be under the yoke of slavery the yoke of religion the yoke of a law in performance but that's only tonight my brother if you allow the spirit the problem is not with a person you will not have the problem with a person if you are led by the spirit the issue is between you and the spirit of god because the Holy Spirit will not tell you to be just frustrated with that man. Yes, be frustrated with him. You know, have an issue with that man. <laughs> Holy Spirit will never tell you that. The problem is not with a person. Maybe with the, the person that you have an issue is an eye-opener that you and the Holy Spirit must come right. You and the Holy Spirit must come in an accurate relationship. Thank you, God, for showing it to me, even if it's in a bad way, how I still have an issue with that guy or with that lady. But help me now. And that's why on another place I'm walking, I'm jumping, where it says everything can work for the good for those who love God. If you love God, everything. And now you sort out, you must sort out the issue with Franzel. I mean, you know, you can easily have an issue with him, I understand. But now, if you have an issue with Franzel, you know, now you sort it out. But everything can work for the good. But suddenly, I have a better relationship with the Holy Spirit because I realize my issue is not, first of all, with Franzel. My issue is with the Holy Spirit, that I'm not led by the Spirit. I'm not having the thoughts of the Spirit. I have the thoughts in the flesh about Franzel. My first issue is not him. My first issue is me and the Holy Spirit. And praise God that even in this bad situation, everything worked for the good. So much more than just a restored relationship with Franzel, but a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are you, are you with me? Where are we now? Now that was number five. Thank you. Number six. Romans 8 verse 2. Holy Spirit wants to bring freedom. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. He can set you free. And in that setting free, it's, He's providing the principles, the framework for you to be free. Why do I say He's providing the framework? So if the Spirit is with you, but there's a lot of guys, the Spirit is with them, but they are not free. They are in jail with their flesh and even demons coming closer. Product of circumstances, product of their past, product of the hurts, product of the, the, the disappointments, product of their money, product of their lack of money, product of whatever. But they're not free to be the one that God has called to have an excellent life on earth. Why? Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives lives, give life. Spirit wants to give life. But the law, if you take the law of the Spirit who gives life, if you take the law, you will take the freedom to receive the life. But the law is not under the curse of a law. The law is the framework. In this framework, Holy Spirit wants to take this word and make it practical for you so that you understand in this framework, in this area, in this sphere, I can have freedom. I can have life. I understand freedom. I'm free to go to Cape Town within a day. Hallelujah. You know, because there's something like a vehicle, you know. Some don't go fast, some go fast, but all according to the law of 120. Amen. 
Nah, there's no guy saying amen now. Doctor? 120. Okay. What am I saying? You are free. And you can do it. But I can go according to the flesh. And then I don't know the road to Cape Town. There's no GPS. There's no map. There's no road signs. I go here through the field. I go there and there I must fight some baboons. There I must run from a giraffe. There I must, uh, you know, there, there, there's, these guys want to steal this from me. And I don't understand why God allow that. But it's my choice to run through the woods and run, there's no woods in the free state, to run through the farms and to this place and that. Hello, like a cuckoo's maniki. No, it's my choice. And I can, I can take the rest of the year to get to the Cape and I can bring it to the, before the Lord and everything. And it's, it's, such a, it's such a struggle to get to Cape. You know, the enemy is so against me. But you know, if you allow the Spirit to give you the framework, to give you the GPS, to give you the map, to show you the road, in what? Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> big revelation. Stay on the in one. And some of the word can be so simplistic, so simplistic, if I just choose to put my issues there and allow the Spirit to make the gospel simple. To make the gospel simple. The Holy Spirit will always make it simple and understandable. Always. And the relationships can become so less complex. If I allow the Spirit. Please, I plead with you. Go and ask the Holy Spirit to bring you into His agendas. And why, he, why are you with me? Ask Holy Spirit tonight, why are you with me? Show me why are you with me? And you can now say, yes, you know a few answers why he's with you. But ask him to explain it in detail to you. Amen. Amen. Otherwise you must say, why are the bitterness is with me? Why this fear is with me? Why this rejection? Why this depression is with me? And let him tell you, let the depression tell you why he's with you. And then maybe you would not agree with him anymore why he must be with you. I know it's not easy to fight certain things. I understand that. In, in the name of Jesus, we stand with one another even when we're going through certain stuff. Amen? We need one another for that. No condemnation. No condemnation. No condemnation. But put yourself in Christ because your spirit is perfect. No, no one's spirit here can be depressed if you are a child of God. No one can go through stress or fear or anything. But your spirit is longing to have this awesome relationship with Abba. That's why the Holy Spirit come alongside your spirit and say, call out Papa, Abba. Are you with me? Okay. Number seven. Romans 8 verse 14. Romans 8 verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God, but more in the original, they are the sons of God. Remember the children of God? They can sit here, but they have their needs and they feel frustrated or they have their immaturities. But the sons of God has grown in Christ. They became mature where it's not about themselves. They not just do what is expected of them, like an immature child is supposed to do. They do it because they love the Lord. They do it because they respect God. And most of all, because also in their relationship with the Holy Spirit, they respect the Holy Spirit. Why will you do this? Why will you allow the Holy Spirit to do all of this? Because you respect the Holy Spirit more than what you respect your opinion and what your feelings are and all those other stuffies. It's because you choose to respect the Holy Spirit. So you can sit here and you can choose. I will respect the Holy Spirit and what he says, or I will respect the other rubbish. The one with a voice in you is the one that you respect. You will hear the clear voice of the Holy Spirit. More and more his voice will become clear if you decide to respect him the most. And what he says and what he wants to do. 
more and more his voice will become clearer. But you respect the presence of your disappointment, the presence of what you went through, and the focus on yourself. That's the voice that will be heard. Holy Spirit's voice will not be heard. He will be with you because he's faithful to the Father who said that we, God will be with us till Jesus comes. And because he's faithful to the Father, he will stay with you till Jesus comes. But his voice to be heard by you, only of you if you choose to respect him and to deal with the other voices. To say, no, you have not the right. Sometimes we can have such strong personalities. Oh, man, and that can be such a problem. Especially if your strong personality can do a lot of great stuff. Ah, then you will slay every Egyptian. And postpone, no, not the men. No, then you will slay every e Egyptian. You must not do that. You must say, ouch, on that one. And say, <laughs> you say, then you will slay every Egyptian, and that's wrong. You're not supposed to, because then you postpone the work of God. I mean, Moses, he had the capacity to kill this Egyptian. And he was right. He was trying to protect because of the rubbish that was happening. You know, the oppression that happened there with, the, with his nation under the Egyptians. But in all of that, Ish, may God help you, my brother, my sister. To yield to Holy Spirit, please. Amen. Amen. I mean, you need to hear that amen now. <laughs> Great. He wants to lead the sons. He will not, he cannot lead the immature child because the child is always busy with himself, always have this issue. He's doing what is expected. But, but here, then his heart is troubled. Then he feels that guy didn't greet me, or that guy didn't say thank you, or that guy spoke uh, bad about me, or that guy said it in the wrong tone. That guy was miserable. That guy was. Uh, and he says, Wara, 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 until he dies. But if you don't want to wara, but if you want to walk with the Holy Spirit, hello, and to be led by the Spirit, I need to grow up. Because to walk with God is not a cheap thing. That's the biggest honor that you can have, like we said in the past. To walk with God is the biggest honor. In the Garden of Eden, to a perfect man and a perfect woman, God was walking and he had a desire to walk with them. He had a desire to walk with him. And he was calling out to them, where are you? Not because he was confused. He knew where they were. But he wanted them to come to him. Hello. So God will call you to him. So that things can be sorted out. So that we can grow up. So that we can walk with him. Because when we walk with him and we grow up, between heaven and earth, heaven and earth comes together. Heaven coming down. What is your prayer always according to Jesus? He said, on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And when heaven and earth unite, when there's an open heaven over your life, more and more because of your prayer life, because of how you position yourself, because how you deal with things, because how you allow Holy Spirit to do a lot of things. Are you still here? Okay. Hallelujah for eyes opening up. Then in that place, when that happens... I can start to walk with him. And was it not, why do you say Enoch? Enoch. That walked with God. He walked with God. He walked with God. And then he didn't die. He didn't go through death to the eternal. He just, one day, he wasn't there anymore. The separation between heaven and earth, it was just not there. It was just one day, he was not there. He walked with God and... He walked into heaven. <laughs> he didn't die. There's something about the honor to walk with God. Amen. It's not a cheap thing. It's a stature. It's an honor. It's a privilege. It's somebody that paid the price. Not just Christ, but that you gave yourself for the process of the Holy Spirit to work in you so that you can be able to walk with him. And not just walk with the things that you think is right. God will help us. Amen. That will happen. Number eight. He will show us the walk. Romans 8 verse 1. 
Holy Spirit will show us how to walk. Okay, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because for those who not walk in the flesh but walk in the Spirit and accordance, in accordance to the Spirit. That means what? He shows you how to walk. Holy Spirit will show you how to walk. Are you with me? So that when you've practiced with the Holy Spirit how to walk, you will learn how to walk with the Father. And how to walk with Jesus. Jesus says, if somebody loves me, he will serve me. Where I am, my servant will be. Where I am, where I'm, I am, Jesus Christ. Where I am, my servant will be also. Tomorrow you only do the works that Christ is doing. And you do only the works with him. What you do, you do with him. Amen? Amen. Not with moaning and groaning, but with him. But coming to that place, this is necessary. But Holy Spirit wants to show you exactly tomorrow how to work. But what? Okay, let me leave that there. Just for the sake of time. Some would say amen now for the sake of time. Okay, number nine. Holy Spirit, make his thoughts available to you. I want you to understand that one especially. Holy Spirit is making his thoughts available to you. Verse 5 to 7. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. He does not submit to God's law, nor can he do so. You are able to think what God is thinking. Now we find in the word that God says you have the mind of Christ. Where? In your spirit you have the mind of Christ. You do have the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God in your spirit. That's what Amplified says. You have the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God. Where? In your spirit. Now we see the word. Now what? What will the Holy Spirit think? I need to think what the Holy Spirit is thinking. But I have the mind of Christ. Okay, can you take the picture with me, please? Just hear me out here. Here's the mind of Christ, the whole word of God. So here's billions of thoughts, actually, at the end of the day. The mind of Christ. Now the word says, the Holy Spirit will take from what belongs to me, Jesus Christ. And it will, he will reveal it to you. So what the Holy Spirit tomorrow is thinking is a specific truth, a specific thing. That's his thoughts. He will take something from Christ, something from the mind of Christ. And he will reveal it to me what I need to apply tomorrow in my life. I will drown. I will suffocate if I must try to understand all this. It's impossible. But praise God for the Holy Spirit that will take it step by step. But the Holy Spirit will not talk of himself. That's what the word says. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit will come, he will not testify of himself, but he will take the words that is from me and explain it to you and remind you and remind you about what I said. Amen. So as you allow Holy Spirit to do that, then from this word, from billions of revelations that you can have, Holy Spirit will take what is from God. That is the thoughts of the Holy Spirit tomorrow. And you can lock into the thoughts of the Holy Spirit tomorrow. Of that, that portion that He has from you. Who of you, you come in the next day and you know, okay, I need to change these 20 things. I need to do this five. I need to deal with these 20 issues. I need to deal with that relationship. I need to change this in my life. I need to have more of this. And you are just uh, finished before the time. But when you walk in the Spirit, there can be life. Because Holy Spirit is practical. He will tell you to do this and take that and take that and deal with this and then that. That is on His mind today for you. Out of the billions of thoughts in Christ that you could have, he will make it very practical. 
very practical. And tonight you will not feel, okay, at least I did two out of the 300 things that I'm supposed to do. No. You did two out of the three, not the 300 maybe. Hallelujah, if you walk with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Number 10. The Holy Spirit will let me be and let me live. He will let me be and let me live. In Him, in Him, in Him. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in, in, in Christ. In Christ. You will find here and you will find in the rest of the Word so many times that where He says it's in Him. I can be, I can have a quality life. Holy Spirit, allow me to have a life. Are you with me? Because He's bringing that life in me. Jesus promised me the life, but Holy Spirit is making it practical. So that tomorrow night you think practically what happens on Monday, and you say, yes, the life of Christ was present. How? No, through the Holy Spirit. How He led me here, and He showed me this, and He told me, don't do that. You with me? Because the Holy Spirit can guide you, but, but even with the big apostles, when they wanted to go this side or that side, and then it says, and the Holy Spirit didn't allow us to go here. And we wanted to go there, and then the Holy Spirit hindered us to go there. So sometimes it can be that you are really wanting to do something for God even, and you want to do the right thing, and the Holy Spirit will stop you and say, this right thing is not the right thing that God has for you today, but that is the thing. That God has for you today. Holy Spirit wants to make it practical. Are you with me? Number 11. We have 14 points. Let's go. Pray with and pray for me. He wants to pray for me. And he wants me to pray with him. Romans 8 verse 26. Romans 8 verse 26. Okay. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Now, as if we can acknowledge that, that will be great. That many times we just throw a tantrum in prayer, but in the past, never again in Jesus' name. Or we just inform God about a lot of stuff as if he doesn't know what you're going through. But it's okay. Psych psychology is good. That you can put it on the table and you can voice it but in effect I don't know what to pray if your Holy Spirit will not guide me yeah. but now it says here but the Spirit himself everybody say himself, himself intercedes for us through wordless groans that means here's the Holy Spirit he's interceding he's praying for me exactly according to the perfect perfect will of God he's praying for me but now if I understand praying in tongues and that's not one of just of the nine gifts because that is a tongue that somebody the Holy Spirit gives to, to somebody here for edifying of the body with an interpretation I'm talking about the devotional tongue of 1 Corinthians 14 where he says when you, you pray in a tongue, your spirit prays. Your spirit that is perfect prays when you pray in a tongue. And your mind is unfruitful. So you want to tell your mind with a lot of rubbish or a lot of thoughts just to shut up. You start to pray in tongues. And you bypass your mind with the issues and the negativity or the whatever ever is in there. You start to pray in tongues. Why? Let's go. Let's read further. He intercedes. And he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. But from that place, as Holy Spirit testify with my spirit, as Holy Spirit cry out in my spirit, God invites me when I pray in tongues to pray with him. So Holy Spirit is praying for me, you know, but you can pray with the Holy Spirit what he is praying for your life. How? By praying in tongues. 
because the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. But the word says, that prayer you don't understand. You don't understand that prayer. But if I want to position myself before God, according to His perfect plan for my life, start to pray in tongues. And you start to intercede with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit with you testify. Holy Spirit with you cry out. Holy Spirit with you. But from what place? When you pray in tongues from your spirit, from the place of perfection, from the place where you are perfect. That's your spirit. Oh, come, let us do that. A few times in my life where I would not know what to do. Even once the way I was just blank, there was a presence of demonic that I didn't know even so intense. Very, 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 very intense. And I, there was not even a thought. And then I just started to pray in tongues. And the next moment it just came to me the right words what to say. Because you pray in line. Pray in tongues in line with God's word. Your soul is there. Your thoughts are there. And the more you focus there and pray in tongues in God's perfect will, the more your soul will come in line. And suddenly your mind boom, will have the right thought. Will have the right strategy. Will have the right emotion. Will have the right stirring. It will just come. But you pray it through. But in this prayer, in this groanings, we will come now to the point. In this chapter, where it talks about there's a groaning, there's a suffering in creation. But it comes to a place of labor. And in this suffering, in this, what will we call it? In this, uh, they say sigh. Sigh, but this other word for sigh. Oh, sigh was not a grumbling. It's, it's, a, uh, it's on you. On another word for sigh. Yeah, not actually heaviness. But that thing that, that can be on you. But in that thing that can be on you, it can destroy you. Or it, it will bring life through birth, through labor. And now the thing is, on creation we will see that. But let's stop. I will get there now. Sorry. Number 12. Holy Spirit will bring conviction. But in this conviction, you will have a declaration. But let's just first talk about the conviction and uh, that what you believe. Romans 8 verse 28. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know, how do you know? And we know that in all things, God works for the good, for those who love him. Those who've been called according to his purpose. And we know. This no is only if the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. Oh, you can hear the scripture and it can do nothing. It can do nothing to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. All things work for the good. For those who love him. It can do nothing to you. But when you hear it through the Holy Spirit, it will explode in you. And it will become a life. It will become a stirring. It will become an energy in you. That you know. That all things can work for the good. All things can work for the good. Doesn't matter what you go through, you can grow. You can grow. Even if you face Goliath, even if you face the, the, yeah, the giants of Egypt. No, Egypt. That is the ten, the ten demonic, what we call them, ten demonic strongholds where, where God came through the ten plagues. And he actually dealt with ten demonic strongholds. But when you can see that, and you can remember the cloud, you can remember the, the fire. Then when you come to Canaan, and there's some other type of giants. Then those giants, they are our food. Oh, we're just going to grow through them. That's what Joshua and Caleb said, hey? Those giants, they are our food, man. We're going to eat them. Not cannibals, but through dealing with them. We're just going to grow. We're just going to grow. Let it be so. But see the greatness of God. Can we grow with that? Can we go with that? Amen. Amen. And then verse 37. Now, in all these things. This other one, he said, everything can work for the good. And now this one say, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
And then I'm convinced that nothing, let's not read those three verses, nothing can separate me from the love of God. So there's a conviction, there's a belief in this man. If you more and more are walking with the Spirit and walking in the Spirit and allow the Spirit to work in you, there will be more and more this unshakable conviction in you. How everything can work for the good. Or that you don't start to have an issue with everything and becoming negative about everything. But if the Holy Spirit works in you, then you start to realize that everything can work for the good. And that in all things, we are more than conquerors. Are you with me? The same with point number 13. Bring a statement. You will, yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy Spirit will bring this statement, but actually conviction statement, the same thing. Bring this declaration. You must more, rather say, bring a declaration. What then shall we say in response to all these things? If you want to say about all the stuff that you can go through and everything going on out there in the world. If God is for us, who can be against us? That is what you can say. In all these things, in everything that you hear, doesn't matter what you hear tomorrow, my brother, my sister, start to learn to speak the truth. And that is in, in, in everything. More than conquerors. Everything can work for the good. Doesn't matter what we go through. If God is for us, who can be against us. But now you say, but the reality is there's a lot of stuff that's coming against us. But the whole thing is, the all-surpassing grace, the awesome greatness of God, when you must compare this major awesome greatness of God with your problem, then it's so incomparable as if you call this thing nothing against God. If God is for me, if this awesome God is for me, can that thing really be against me? Is that possible? <laughs> Not really. It cannot be against me because, hello? And that was David's problem. Not how will I conquer Goliath. His problem was how dare this Goliath come against God's people. Does he not know the greatness of God? That was his problem. That, that Goliath didn't know the greatness of God. If your God is for you, the biggest problem is not knowing the verse. The biggest problem is the greatness of your God according to your mind, according to your soul, according to your perspective, according to your experiences. How do you see the greatness of God? Are you with me? May God help you with that, in your conviction, in that what you believe, and your statement. Last one. He will lead you with an expectation of hope. That brings us to that part of the seven points, seven words. But let me quickly go from this. Hallelujah. All the way back. I consider that our present sufferings, sufferings are not worth it's not worth comparing it with the glory that will be revealed. It's not worth, it's a, it's a waste of time to compare your suffering and your problems and your challenges with God. It's a waste of time because you cannot compare it even <laughs> to one another. But if we make the suffering a God, if we make that big and we honor that and we respect the sufferings, then yeah, then God is greater in my mind and the suffering is greater. Then the, the challenge is greater and then God is greater. So, so God just make it sometimes to be greater than, than the things that I go through. But if I know my God and if I allow Holy Spirit to reveal to me who is this God, then it's, I cannot, I'm wasting my time. It's not worth comparing. With the glory that we, we will be revealed where? In us. The problem is, God's glory must be revealed in you. God's beauty, God's strength, God's greatness. Greatness is living in you. Let's say, greatness is living in me. Because God is living in you. But if you, if you don't respect the greatness of God in your spirit and you ignore it, you can glorify, you can bow before the idols of your emotions and the idols of what you're going through and the idols of your frustration. 
You can bow before that. That's okay. But God wants to reveal himself through you. For the creation waits with eager expectation. There's a waiting. There's a waiting. But there's a waiting that will bring the abortion. There's a waiting that will bring a frustration for an abortion. For the destruction for what God wants to birth through your life. Or there's a waiting that will bring a birthing. That will be life. And wow, wow, and life, and life that is from him. Waiting in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the sons of God. For the mature Christians to, to be revealed. When you look at creation out there, there's a suffering. There's a suffering. There's a groaning. A suffering. Because the nations are waiting for the church to grow up. To mature. For the sons of God to be revealed. And the beauty of God will be revealed. The problem is for the church to arise. For the creation was subject to frustration, frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one that subjected it. In hope, in hope, in hope, that is if we can do this in hope, that the creation that will, will be liberated from the bondage to decay, that was brought, so that we will be brought into the freedom and glory that is revealed in the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly. Let's say, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly. But there's people that groan inwardly and they destroy outwardly. Because they cannot link it with hope. But if you allow the Spirit to work in you, you will not be a child that gives birth to death, that gives birth to destruction, that will give birth to that what is shame and still go to heaven. No, but you will be a child of God that will become a son of God and you will give birth to that what is from God. You will be champions. You will be the champions. You will be the captain of the teams. Captain of teams. And the team is waiting for the captain. And everybody is waiting for the captain to come. But there's no captains. But they are waiting. They are waiting eagerly. And everybody around is wait they are waiting. The spectators are waiting. And they cannot start until the captain. And the captain is the church. And the nations are waiting and creation is waiting and Bluefontaine is waiting. Bluefontaine is waiting and some in your family are waiting for you to rise up. They don't even know it. But God is waiting. God has a plan with your families. And you say, yeah, but my mom and my dad and my brother and my sister. And this and this and this and this. But God has exposed you to truth. And you sit with truth and you can bring liberty to them. By taking the truth and giving it through. By starting to pray for them. By starting to pray for people. Where it's not about you and it's about them. Then you start to grow up. Start to pray for others. Then you start to grow up. Job, his situation changed when he prayed for his friends. What you sow, you will reap. Okay. You sow the blessing. You sow the breakthrough. You sow it. In prayer, you bring them before the Lord. Because then you become like Jesus, the intercessor. You become like the Holy Spirit, the intercessor. You become like them, and you will see your breakthrough. We are, we are going for the... Yeah, we are at the end, actually. Sure. Sorry for that. For the creation was subjected to frustration. Okay. We have that. I... We groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship. For our adoption to sonship. And that at the end, but if you hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. You can throw the other words up. Um, so there's a sigh. There's a groaning, there's a longing for, there's a waiting, there's a hope, there's an expectation, there's a persistence, there's a labor. Can you remember these words? Because you need to stay with those words. Because that's when it's, the pressure is on. 
that's when you need to focus. Uh, those who gave birth, how many people gave birth here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, nine. There's a certain focus. It's not like you, you're gonna, you are in labor. Anybody wants to make the sound of labor? Not one of the ones. <laughs> no, that is the peak when you went down the hill. <laughs> uh, not one. All the ladies that gave birth said no. <laughs> because they know the intensity of that. Uh, so he's not somebody who's in labor and say, Oh, can I not have a cup of tea, please? <laughs> That's a freak show. There's no one in labor doing that. Or sitting in, and I must first discuss this issue with this person uh, before they can go further in labor. They're already in labor. What freak show is that? Okay. Now, the word says there's labor pains. But the one, there will be, in the, the frustration, there will be death and destruction. And for the church, there will be a labor pains that is wrapped up in prayer. Wrapped up through the spirit. And what will be brought forth will be from God. Let it be done to me according to your word. As the spirit brought Jesus into the womb of Mary. Let it be done to me today to you according to his word we as the bride of christ so that what god wants to birth through us as the bride of christ it will be birthed but for that focus focus the baby must come out that's the revelation for some reason the why the women know that, that the baby must come out amazing eh <laughs> And if only the church can grasp that revelation, that will be awesome. If you can grasp that revelation. But think of this lady in labor. And she just walk around and try to have a life while in labor. What the heck? But that's Christians not praying through certain things. Not, not released by faith with the right expectation. Before the Lord. That what must be released. And they don't bring themselves into that right accurate place. What a life. And that's where many people say Christianity. Shoo, 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 is a rough. It's a little bit rough. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to make it simple. Simple. So that in the groaning. There will be a longing for. To see him. They will be waiting up upon him. There will be a hope, an expectation, a persistence in the labor. Then the labor will not be hell. And distraction will not be seen. Holy Spirit going to help you. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Oh, Holy Spirit, forgive us. God, forgive us where we didn't respect the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But even today, even tonight, even history makers, and even times alone, times in the cell groups, God, I pray that you will touch us in a special way. I pray that you will give these guys such special, special time with you when they open your word. It will, just, they will, it will be enlightenment. Life will come from the word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will meet them in such special ways when they open your word, when they have time with you, when they reach out to you, when they call you Father, when they ever, when they cry out ever. Oh, Lord, help us to get into your word and help us to see that what you have for us. God, forgive us for not praying enough in tongues, for not joining you, Holy Spirit, in intercession. For our lives and nations and families and whatever you feel we're supposed to join you with in prayer and intercession. Teach us such a lifestyle, Lord. We trust you for that, that you will come and do that. In Jesus' name, so we pray and all say, Amen. Amen.